Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to this next LM Trip Reports video. This one is a special. Today we'll be looking at the last of the Locos theme in Greater Anglia uh, before all of Greater Anglia's operations in that area become that of units and buy modes which they will be doing later this year in 2019. I originally had a very different intro planned for this video and well I'll let you see for yourself in just a sec why it's not made the final cut. So, as you can see, uh, the weather in Norwich at the time of filming this was extremely inclement and as a result of that I couldn't, in, I couldn't actually make that video as part of this one. Um, I just wanted to tease it for you just so that you could see exactly what I was facing on the day. Um, but with, as with all British things in this country, uh, we carry on regardless. Um, so let's join me as we reflect on the fantastic work that Direct Rail Services have been doing in partnership with Greater Anglia um, to keep these locos running to this very day. Let's go. Norwich is the home of Greater Anglia and the terminating point for lots of Greater Anglia services including that of the Wherry Lines to Great Yarmouth and Lowestoft. It first opened in 1844 and was once part of three stations in the city. The Wherry Lines has been a base of operation for direct rail services for several years now, with the company operating Class 37 and 68 hauled locomotive stock trains to run as a stopgap until Greater Anglia acquired new rolling stock from Stadler and Bombardier. Here is one of their locomotive haul services arriving now from Lowestoft. Norwich is the eastern terminating point for Greater Anglia's intercity class 90 haul trains which are also being replaced this year by brand new Bombardier electric multiple units. Here is the 0740 departure for London departing Norwich.
Locomotive moves to and from Crewe and Wembley are also common in Anglia, and here is one now at Ipswich with a Class 90 taking a Class 37 to Norwich Crown Point Depot. It's time now to take a ride along the Wherry Lines behind Direct Rail Services Class 37 424. Here is my set arriving at Norwich from Lowestoft with two Juliet 67, whilst one Papa 21 departs for London. Here we are at Brundle, one of the first stations along the Wherry Lines. As you can see, it's a quaint little station, and here you can see one of Greater Anglia's Class 156 DMUs arriving at the station, with two Papa 14 arriving with a service to Lowestoft.
Our next sighting at Brundle sees direct rail services class 37424 at the helm of 2 Papa 18, the 1036 departure to Great Yarmouth. A fantastic sight with the retro semaphore signal in the shot too. And introducing a call located on the Great Yarmouth branch of the Wherry Lines, where we see 37424 depart with 2 Papa 14 bound for Great Yarmouth. Here it is on the return run with 37423 leading 2 Papa 17 to Norwich. We once again return to Norwich to see 37423 lead the short set with 2 Papa 2-1 the 1352 arrival from Great Yarmouth. Another of Norwich's half hourly direct services to London departs here with 90013 in charge of one Papa 43 to the capital. As you can see, Norwich is very popular with locomotives of all types, however this will not be the case for very long. In this next shot you can see something that will be retained, the full weekly test train operated by Colas Rail on behalf of Network Rail. Here we see 37610 arriving with one quick 98 from Cambridge. Here it is again, this time with 37175 in charge, destined for Great Yarmouth.
we return to Brundle where we travel behind 37424 departing once again for Great Yarmouth. After spending the afternoon in Great Yarmouth, we returned to the station to see 2 Papa 3-2, the 1810 arrival from Norwich. I would say here in Lowestoft you can clearly see how much everyone enjoys the last of the locos here in East Anglia. I met a delightful group of enthusiasts who are making the most of every opportunity to witness the locomotives before they go. question is, what do you think about all these changes in Greater Anglia? Is it time to move on from the Adrian Loco horse stock or will you be sad to see the locomotives go after all these years? Please let me know in the comments section below. Of course, locomotives will still reign supreme elsewhere, like here at Maidenhead, for example. Or even here at Upper Holloway on the Gospel Oak to Barking Line. and even to here at Reading with the Network Rail new measurement train.
With a new horizon very quickly approaching, there really isn't long left to make the most of the locos on the Greater Anglia network. And I really do urge that you do take a trip down to Norwich to experience them. They are fantastic. Here we are at DIS, where one of the Stadler Class 755 bi-mode units is on test, preparing to replace the Class 37s, 156s and 153s. Luckily, units are not replacing their locomotives on other networks. For example, Direct Rail Services will still have a contract to operate Class 68s for both Chilton and Scott Rail, and soon TransPennine will join the bandwagon too. Direct Rail Services will still provide Class 57s as motive traction for the Great Western Railway Night Riviera, and in a similar fashion, GBRF will continue to use Class 92s on the Caledonian Sleeper too. Scott Rail also have a bold future with XGWR Class 43s, so by no means is this the end. But this really is the last of the locos here in East Anglia. Let me know your thoughts in this time of change. With the end for the Class 90s and 37s night, it certainly is sad to see these trains, which were built in Britain, to be leaving the fleet. But thankfully, this is by no means the end elsewhere, with lots of operators still using locomotives now and even in the future. Well, thank you for watching this tribute video, and I do look forward to sharing more content with you throughout the year. Let's see you again in another LM Trip Reports video. But for now, goodbye.